Let's see what size wire we can use in the Victron Orion XS. Hey folks, my name is Nigel from Offgrid and in this video we're going to be looking at the Victron Orion XS, latest DC to DC charger from Victron and we're going to look at what size wire we can get into the bottom of it. So to start off with automatically you can see that the terminals have changed on this new model. So previously it had like a clamping mechanism that would actually lift a clamp up and clamp the wires in that way. In this version they've gone for a grub screw in these terminals so you put your wires and the grub screw squashes the the wires. So really it's 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 advisable with this style of terminal to use ferrules. With the previous style it wasn't essential, you could get away with not using ferrules because it kind of clamps everything together, whereas with this, because the grub screws potentially will separate the wires, it would be advisable to use a ferrule in this version. But let's jump in and see what it actually looks like and how easy it is to get wires into here. So we're going to start off with here I've got a 16 millimeter wire which I've bared the end of it and we're going to start off by putting that in just to see how well it goes in and how it feels without a ferrule. So we're going to take the grub screw almost all the way out so you can see there we have uh, pretty much opened the gap completely and with a clean bared wire end like that we're going to put it in and it's fairly easy to do it neatly so that you don't have any wires flaying out and causing a problem and because the grub screws are fairly big and fill the space I'd be pretty happy with that as a solution. Obviously it makes it even better that you have this that clamps over onto the wires to stop any play on the actual conductor on the copper. So this will actually clamp the wires so that you remove that that play and, and the potential torque that you're putting on the copper that you don't really want. So that looks pretty good. There's quite a lot of room in there. So putting that that uh, the, those coppers in there with without the ferrule worked pretty well. I was quite happy with that. The next thing we're going to try is a 16 millimeter wire with the ferrule. So this is a little bit more tricky than than the other one from my previous experience. So I'm going to put it up on its end. Hopefully that'll help you to see it a bit better. But if we try it like that, one of the challenges here is obviously that's a round hole. The previous one was a square hole, so a lot of people like us included have a four-sided ferrule crimper, so it crimps a, a square ferrule. And trying to get a square thing into a round hole is not always the easiest task. So with the 16 mil wire, it is possible to work it in there. It takes a bit of work to get it in, but you can get it in there reasonably successfully. And then obviously as you tighten it down, that grub screw squeezes in that ferrule nicely. So I'm pretty happy with that. These terminals are fairly short though. So as you can see here, I've even got too much copper for what you can actually fit in the ferrule, in the terminal rather. But yeah, 16 mil with a ferrule works fine. You'd be better off with a <coughs> six-sided ferrule crimper rather than a four-sided because then you get a more rounded profile rather than trying to put a square thing into a round hole. Now we're going to try this which is a 25 millimeter wire. So this is the maximum that the Orion XS is designed to take and this is what Vectron recommend. They, they have a new system for their wire sizing recommendations in this data sheet. Previously they did it based on the maximum that you could put in here. Now they're doing it based on the temperature and the type of wire and things like that. So, But as a general rule of thumb to not over complicate it, I would say to folks if your run is under 5 meters then 16 millimeter should be fine. If it's over 5 meters then you're going to want 25 millimeter. Or or if you can just put a 25 millimeter in, then it makes sense to do that because then you get the best performance. So let's see how well the 25 mil fits in here. So we've got the terminal completely open, grub screws all the way out. You have to watch with these grub screws. There's nothing to stop it, so it can just come all the way out, which you run the risk of dropping it and losing it if, if that does happen. So we're just going to pinch the end so that those are nice and tight and all close together. And we, I, I find that it's best if you can turn it a little bit because then you kind of get everything moving in the same direction. You don't have it fraying out and f flailing all over the place. So 25 millimeter fits in really nicely without the ferrule as you can see. It's nice and tight. Obviously as you put this 
clamp on there, it's going to keep the tension off the, conju off the um, conductor and I'm pretty pleased with that. So I would use 25 mil as much as possible, wherever possible, obviously. If you have to use 16 and if your run is relatively short, then that's no problem. But as you can see here, we've got 16 mil with a ferrule and that's with a four-sided crimp. You can get it in, it's a little bit fiddly and, and you have to basically work the ferrule into the, the gap because it's a square thing in a round hole. The 16 mil without the ferrule goes in easy, no problems. The 25 mil without the ferrule goes in no problems and I don't have a 25 mil ferrule at the moment so we're going to leave that out but yeah this is a pretty good solution I'm pretty happy with this not too difficult to get in the one thing that I would add though is what I've taken to doing when I install these units and pretty much across the board any of the Victron DC to DC or MPPTs is I actually put the wires in before I mount it on the surface especially if I'm working in a really confined awkward place so a lot of the time you are working in like a locker in a motorhome or something like that and it's confined and sometimes you're hunched over and you're trying to work like underneath the unit and it's just Anybody that's installed in a motorhome or a van knows how awkward it can be sometimes. And so I've actually taken to, I get all my wires in place, I get them the lengths right, everything ready to go. I then prepare the ends of the wires, whether it's just bearing it or putting a ferrule on or whatever. And I actually put them into the unit while it's loose like this. And then once they're in, I then mount the unit on the wall or wherever it's gonna hang. And I found that to be the most efficient and best way of doing it because sometimes, Sometimes I've spent like anywhere up to 15 minutes trying to get wires into the bottom of an MPPT because it's in such an awkward place. And so doing this method where you put them in when it's down, you can make sure that they're all in correctly, that the, the contact is good, that they tighten properly, that they're in all the way, that there's no loose bits of copper going out that can short with their neighbor next door, all that sort of stuff. So there's a number of benefits to doing it that way. But yeah, overall, very keen and excited to get these Orion XSs out over the coming months to folks. We've already started installing them uh, for folks here in our workshop. So yeah, we're pretty pumped with them. They're a really nice piece of kit, really good unit. So if you are interested in an Orion XS, we've got them on our store still for a pre-order price. And uh, so that's not going to last much longer. As soon as we start getting them in stock, then that price will drop away. So if you want to take advantage of that, then now is the time. But yeah, hopefully this video has been interesting and helpful. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.